Hi plant friends! Welcome back to our channel. This is Feli and I'll be talking about the common houseplant pest. So, whether we like it or not, in our plant parent journey, we'll be able to experience pest infestation. It is important to ID the common pest and we know what to do about it. With control, the best control is prevention. It is better to do prevention than to do elimination of the pest. How to do that? Proper plant care. Weak plants or unhealthy plants are susceptible to pests. So give the optimum care to your plants. Right amount of water, right amount of light, right amount of humidity, light, right amount of temperature. The healthier your plants will be, the more resistant they are to pests. Of course, we have the potting mix. Use commercially prepared potting mix because those in the garden, they can be a source of pests because they're exposed outside. So they are really, they can be a source of pest infestation as you bring it into your home. Another one is fertilizer. Feed them. Feed them when they are active. For tropical countries, whole year plants are active. But for temperate countries, when we have winter, we have different seasons, we need to feed the plants from spring to fall. That way they will thrive healthy. And another one is clean your plants. Clean the foliage. Wash the leaves or use a cloth. Clean the upper and lower surface of your foliage. And then of course, aside from the foliage, clean them for like brown leaves, dead, like dead leaves, stems, and flowers. They are clean like people. If you are clean or doing proper hygiene, of course, most likely you'll be far from any like disease. So same as plants. If plants are clean, plants are healthy, most likely they will be free from diseases. Another one, so we have proper plant care. Number two is careful observation. Schedule a time where you will check your plants. Check carefully. I have my own hand lens with me so that especially the spider mites or very tiny organisms, you won't be able to see it with your aided, with unaided eyes. So even cheap hand lens will do. That way you'll be able to see what's with your plants. Are there pests or what's the problem? So you can clearly see it. And then another one is isolate new plants and problem plants. I think that's important. I, I practice that, so I'm not guilty with that one. If you buy some plants, I know we are excited and we just want to display it in which location we intend to display. But wait probably a week or two weeks just so you will know that if there's pests, your other collection won't get affected. So within that isolation stage, you have to check if in few days are there like symptoms of any infestation. Because if there will be, then your other plants are safe. And then of course, if you detect during your routine check, if you detect that there are symptoms of any infestation, right away isolate your plant. It's better safe than sorry, they say. Early detection is key to managing pests. Always inspect your plants for insects, webbing or mining. Watch out for discolored leaves as they may be evidence of the problem. So let's say after we did try to prevent um, pests from entering, but there's already the pest. What will we do? So we have four control methods. That is physical and mechanical control, biological control, organic control, and 
chemical control. Let's start with the physical and mechanical control. This method is this method is done by either directly killing the pest or blocking the pest from feeding into your plant or making the environment unsuitable for them. One example is pruning. If the infestation is localized, just cut the infected leaves, stem, just cut that part. But if the infestation is already widespread, then probably just cut the most like severely affected part. That way you can only focus on those less affected part and hoping we can like get rid of the rest of the pest and make the plant healthy again. Okay, so let's say if the infestation is so severe, depending on the plant, cutting it back may help eliminate the pest. If roots are infested, again, it depends with the plant, make a cutting out of it and start a new plant. And then watch new growth for signs of infestation. In that way, you can decide whether to prune it again or totally get rid of it. Another one, so we have pruning, and another one is the physical removal of pests. So you can handpick larger size pests like caterpillars or snails. Then for scales, I have this first-hand experience where I just remove the scales through my fingernails. If you don't want to ruin your fingernails, you can use probably a nail file or something that can scrape off the scales. Another one is for mealybugs. Mealybugs, you can just use tweezers to get it or cotton tip or cotton swab. Cotton swab dip in alcohol to remove aphids or um, mealybugs. And another one is washing. You can like for big plants or not that sensitive plants, you can blast it with water, like with force. And of course, for sen more sensitive plants, you can just use um, damp cloth, but make sure that you don't use that damp cloth to clean other plants. Otherwise, you'll be trans transferring one pest from one plant to another. So just be careful of that one. Oh, another one is for like fungus knots. Fungus knots, they love damp soil. So allowing your soil to, to dry out, again, this depends with the plant, to dry out. That way, you will desiccate them so they don't want like dry conditions. So that's an example of giving a uh, environment unsuitable for the pest. So that's an example. That's the fungus knots. And then probably the most brutal example for physical and chemical control is discarding the plant. If you've done pruning, you've done washing and other methods, but still it doesn't work, you just have to discard the plant. If the plant is like, let's say, you know you can't anymore save it, then I think it's best to just throw it away, discard it, destroy it, rather than you will risk spreading the pest to the rest of your collection. So another one, another control is biological control. I'm not sure which countries are practicing this, but I have read somewhere that some are releasing lace wings. Lace wings are beneficial insects. So they feed on, on most houseplant pests. Some do that. And oh, if you see spiders or ladybug beetles in your plants, don't kill them. They are beneficial insects. They, we have that notion that all insects are pests. It's not. We have beneficial insects and non-beneficial insects. We want those beneficial insects in our plants. So in like outdoors, there's that balance of biological and uh, pests. So 
we have more available biological controls outside because it's their natural condition. But indoors, it's a different thing because we protect them from like most most like insects. They can those beneficial insects can readily enter our homes. So that's the thing. Some aids that if they have problems, they release lace wings, they release um ladybugs. So that's the thing. Others is the some use the Bacillus thuringiensis. I haven't done that, but I've just read Bacillus thuringiensis is said to be effective against fungus knots but only on larvae and not on adults so you have to bear that in mind so another one is organic control it is the non-chemical method of controlling it's like probably using coffee against slugs against snails something like that so it includes the application of natural products, homemade natural products or synthesized products that mimics natural products. This is an alternative, um, alternative to insecticides. And I think for, especially just for indoors, like personal collection, I think if those other controls doesn't work, I think you should go first to the organic control because our own collection is just small compared to like plantations. So I think with these ones, although you have to apply as often compared to the chemical control, but this one, we only have like small problems and like probably just few plants. So we can just apply and target those plants. And the advantage is it's non-toxic. So, and then it doesn't leave any residue. So, example of this one is neem oil for white flies, strips and aphids, plant oil extracts and insecticidal soap for scales, strips, aphids and white flies, and spider mites. So, that examples. I mean, I know there are a lot of somewhat organic um sprays there organic products more natural products to use to control this pest so we have a lot in the market i think neem oil neem oil is the best example and the last one is last is the chemical control this involves the use of chemicals to kill the pest inhibit them from feeding reproducing or do their essential behaviors so this involves purely synthetic chemicals i would say i mean in my own opinion i would use it last because we are not dealing with vast hectares of plants we're just dealing with few plants or like let's say hundreds of plants so we don't need it i mean so if we can try at least other controls and not directly go to the chemicals. So this one, advantage of chemical control is it acts rapidly. And then it has wide range of properties and it's less expensive. The disadvantage is that aside from it leaves residue, insect resistance to pesticides may may develop and we don't want that i mean if you can just pick a few mealybugs that won't hurt you it's not like a big drama to pick them up or just wash it off so yeah just in my own opinion i would go to not spraying just chemical and physical control then probably organic control and then last is the chemical control. So I hope you learned something from this one. These things that I've told you are like general principles in control. So hope you've learned something. Thank you very much for watching.